Welcome to Three Steps to Sketch. Today we're going to look at graphing an unshifted secant graph, y equals 2 secant 3x. So here's our template and our equation. And we see our equation is in the form y equals a secant bx. And that's how we know there aren't any shifts and we can use the unshifted template. So let's go ahead and dive into step one. Find our companion equation and its essential information. So the companion equation is what we'll graph and then um, take a form of the reciprocal um, or we'll flip it into the secant graph so that we get the actual graph we want. So our companion equation is just going to be the reciprocal of secant and everything else in the equation will stay the same. So it'll be y equals two cosine of three x. So now we can analyze this equation. We'll find a, which is the coefficient in front of cosine. So that's two. So that tells us our amplitude of this cosine graph or the distance from midline to maximum or minimum. And linking that into our secant graph, which we'll finish up with, um, that you'll see our maximum from our cosine graph will end up being the local minimum of the secant graph. And then likewise, the minimum of our companion equation will become a local maximum. So we'll see that when we have our graph at the end. Um, just, it's nice to be looking out for that. Okay, then B is the coefficient of X. So we see it's three. That tells us we'll have three cycles of our graph between zero and two pi. And it also helps us find the period. So we calculate period or the length of a horizontal cycle using two pi divided by B. So our period will be two pi divided by three. Now that we've analyzed the basics, we can choose how to label our axes. So these will be our scale labels. And we wanna be really intentional for the horizontal labels. We take our period and divide by four so that the key points of our companion pattern will align nicely with our horizontal tick marks. So we take two pi over three and you may want to write this out, 2 pi over 3. And if you divide by 4, that's the same thing as multiplying by 1 fourth. Sometimes that's easier to look at. So we have 2 pi over 12 or pi over 6 is how we'll count to label our horizontal axis. Our vertical scale, 1 usually works great. So let's take a minute to label our axes. Starting with the horizontal, we'll label counting by 1 pi over 6. 2 pi over 6 reduces to pi over 3. 3 pi over 6 reduces to pi over 2 and four pi over six reduces to two pi over three. This fourth tick mark using this setup should always match your period, and so here it does. Now let's keep counting. We have five pi over six, six pi over six reduces to pi, seven pi over six, and eight pi over six reduces to four pi over three. So if you're working along with me, go ahead and hit pause. I'm going to pause and get the negative side of this axis labeled. Okay, so here is the fully labeled horizontal axis. And now let's label our vertical axis just counting by one. So we have one, two, three, and negative one, negative two, negative three. So now we have all of the analysis done for our companion equation. And before we move on to step two, I like to find the asymptotes equation for our final secant graph. And so there's a really quick way to do this. I will post videos that go a little bit more into depth on this, um, but the quick way to do it is to take your inputs of your secant function so that's three X, we'll do a little scratch work. Take those inputs and set them equal to the parent asymptotes of the secant graph. Um, so those happen at pi over two plus pi K. And that's because when we take the reciprocal of cosine, if you take the reciprocal of zero, you end up with an undefined point, which is a vertical asymptote. So this setup allows us to just transform those original asymptotes of secant to the graph that we actually want. Where applying all of our horizontal transformations to those parent asymptotes. So now all we have to do is divide the whole equation by three, multiplying by one third there. All right, and then we'll get our asymptotes equation. So I'll write that in the blank. We have x equals pi over six plus pi over three k. And if you're not familiar with this k, it's an integer. Um, it can be any integer, and depending on what integer you substitute in and simplify, it'll generate a different asymptote for your graph. So say you let k equal zero. Our final graph should have an asymptote at pi over six. Let k equal one, 
do a little bit of calculation there and you'll see that you should have another asymptote at pi over two. Um, similarly, you can plug in k is negative one. We would anticipate an asymptote at negative pi over six after you simplify there. So play around with that. It's a really, really helpful way to quickly find the asymptotes of a secant graph. And it's also nice to go ahead and do it at the beginning so that you can double and triple check your final graph um, and make sure all the pieces fit together well. All right, so now let's go into step two. We're going to plot our companion pattern. So we're essentially graphing y equals two cosine three x. If you aren't familiar with graphing cosine equations, I'll put a link in the video description for that. So it's a really good skill to have on hand. It makes this just a lot easier. Okay, so we're graphing our cosine pattern. We see that this is an unreflected cosine pattern and we know it's going to fall in the general pattern of maximum x-intercept, minimum x-intercept, and then of course we would repeat. So we'll have our maximum happening on the y-axis, and to get the y-coordinate of that maximum, simply look at a. Do notice that I'm using a light blue. Um, we want to mark this lightly because this is our companion equation, not our final graph. So again, we have our maximum. Then at the first horizontal tick mark moving right, we'll have an x-intercept move to the second horizontal tick mark and take the opposite value of a for the y coordinate. So our next point will be at pi for three, negative two. Then we have another x intercept. And then our pattern would start its repeat for another cycle. Okay, so you can see here would be the companion equation. Again, make sure you're doing this lightly or in a different color. Um, this is the graph of y equals two cosine three x. And now we're ready for step three, where we will recip, sketch, and repeat. So anytime you have a leading coefficient other than one, you aren't technically taking the reciprocal of the points that we have graphed for the companion pattern. Um, we know what the secant graph looks like, and we've already applied the vertical stretch factor, that two out front. Um, so we aren't taking literal reciprocals of the points, but we know that the maximum that's happening should turn into a local minimum, okay? So we have that. We know that the original x-intercept should be a vertical asymptote. We know that the companion pattern's minimum should turn into a relative maximum. We have another x-intercept, so another vertical asymptote. Do notice that these asymptotes are at pi over six and pi over two, and we predicted those using our equation. Okay, and then at two pi over three, we have another local minimum. So let's sketch in and we can actually see our secant graph here. Okay, so it looks just like this. Again, notice we aren't literally taking reciprocals of y values with this, um, but we're using that companion graph um, and then changing it over to the secant graph that we want. So let's go ahead and repeat for a few more cycles. So we're just creating this pattern and replicating it again and again. So here's another vertical asymptote at five pi over six. Notice that would be if you let K equal to two, we'd have another local maximum point. So that's not an absolute maximum. It's just in the area, just the local area or relative area. That's the highest Y value. Okay, another vertical asymptote. This would be if K was three. And then we'd see another part of the curve with a local minimum. And let's work the other way. So here's our asymptote at negative pi over six. That's if we let k be negative one. We have another part of the secant curve where we end up with a local maximum. Another vertical asymptote. You see we're just repeating this pattern over and over again. We have another curve that has a local minimum another vertical asymptote. And you can work this for as many cycles as you need. Um, so we'll finish up here with the grid that we have. And this is four cycles of y equals two secant three x. I'll be sure to post some more examples so you can see this three steps to sketch method in action. Um, and I'll also post some playlists for graphing other trig functions if you're interested in that. Thanks for watching.